Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Team Break Tuesday. It is release night eve for the brand new 2024 Heritage Baseball. And we're getting a visitor. Sophia is hyping <laughs> Heritage up a little bit. I actually, I was, I'm a little disappointed. Really? I have a video of Heritage, the preview video, and it is really crawling along. I started to upload it a little while ago, and for whatever reason, it looks like it's going to take another like hour to upload. So it's it's coming, but it might not be uploaded until a bit later. So it's right now, currently, you can see we're waiting on it. It's stuck at 16%. Slow, slow, slow goal roll. Usually when I upload a video here, I've got fiber optic uh, cable. And it's like 500 megabytes per second or whatever. And uh, usually I can upload a video in literally just a few seconds. So I don't know what's going on. Hopefully the live stream doesn't conk out tonight. But it'll be coming at some point within the next hour or so, I think. So anyway, here's what we've got. 2024 Heritage. The, it is a... This is going to be a six-box break of each round. It is a 24... Pack box, nine cards per pack. The short prints have moved from the end of Heritage to the front. Hey, this is Furco. What's up, man? Um, my condolences, Furco, on the uh, the Marlins 1 and 10 start. It's tough. So short prints are in here at a rate of one in every three packs. And Chris says, did the Box Wars and the Sunday Auction get mailed out yet? Yeah, Chris, you should have got... Should have got a notification that that all got mailed out. So your stuff's on the way. Sunday auctions from two days ago. Yours went out the very next day. So we've got a payment coming in right now. Anthony Collins just picked up the Milwaukee Brewers for this pick your team break. So here's what we have available. I kind of got a late start of putting this on Patreon. I didn't list this until like yesterday, late afternoon or yesterday evening. My bad. But here's what we've got available. And um, we'll, we'll make sure that these go. So some of these spots I'm going to take myself if need be. So in Heritage 1, it is a pick your team round. We've got the following teams if anyone's interested in them. We've got the Cleveland Guardians at 20. I'm just going to call it 30 instead of 29.99, 30 bucks. We've got Colorado, the Colorado Rockies at 25. And by the way, these prices include all the, the shipping and and fees so this is just out the door there's the chicago white Sox 25 detroit tigers at 35 let's see what else we've got here houston astros at 35 are still available we've got the los angeles angels with the mike trout possibility at 50 we've got miami the marlins at 25 We've got the Minnesota Twins at 25. We have uh, the Oakland A's at 30. We've got San Diego at 35. We've got San Francisco at 35. And then there's two more. We've got Toronto and Washington both at 25. So those teams are still available. Put them on the board here. So that's break H1. We also have the next closest rounds that will go tonight. We've got Big League. Big League with... What did we do again for Big League? Was it 10 boxes? 10 hobby boxes? I think it's 10 hobby boxes. Let me let me double check. It's been a week or two since we, we've done Big League. Big League is... We've got another visitor. Back again. Big League is 10 hobby boxes. And there are, we need to clean clean some spots in here, huh? There's 13 spots left there. Sandra. Sandra. Yep, Sandra sent a mystery product. And I saw that Jackson Holiday's called up. That's big news. We've got Mixer Round 1, which also is pretty close. That has 13 spots left. And we've got Bowman Inception. What is that? Which has 18 spots. Carmel Trophy. That's pretty good. We'll start off by ripping a personal box tonight. 
You have personal boxes. Here's the personal rounds that we have. If you want to grab any of these, then we'll go ahead and get started with the personal box. Bowman Inception from 2023. It's a $200, $200 box on Blowout. We got it for $139, which is $60 off. I need to like move these heritage boxes out. They're kind of taking up some of my space. We have Signature Series, Active Player. We got those for $75 a box. We've got Elite Extradition. I'm just going to put EEE. You'll know what that means. We've got that at $79 a box. We've got um, Big League Hobby at $57 a box. And Stadium Club Compact at $74 a box. So we'll be ripping some personals. We'll get the personal started. The first one we have is going to be Dennis O. So Dennis, we'll start out with you. You've got a, you picked up a personal of signature series. Let me get your name on this. And hopefully we can give you something big out of this to start things out right. Good luck. Nate says baseball's got a big problem on its hands right now with all the pitchers going down. Yeah, we kind of discussed that a little bit already. It's, uh, it seems like every week there's like two or three big names more that we lose. I think Framber Valdez is on that list now. Spencer Strider joined that list. He just lost Yuri Perez. We have Maria Robinson just grabbed Houston and the Angels. Thank you very much, Maria. So Maria Robinson grabbing Houston and the Angels and Heritage. We'll go ahead and delete them off the list. Houston. And the Angels right there. All right, so Heritage is... Getting there, we'll start off with Signature Series box for Dennis O. Good luck, Dennis. Let's see what we can find in this one right here on this Tuesday night. Owen Furco is not too happy, obviously, about Yuri Perez going down. They were so careful with him, too. They handled him with kid gloves, but I guess... And yet it didn't matter. Six foot seven, big frame like that, I guess. A lot of stress. Man, I thought that was Mike Trout for a second. Not a Mike Trout. Logan O'Hoppy. Rookie card, though. It's always nice to find a rookie. Logan O'Hoppy's a decent rookie from 2023. Had a great 2023 before getting hurt. It's number to 60. So Logan O'Hoppy for Dennis O gets us started with the personals. All right, so for Heritage, we'll go into Heritage right now and we will open this up. Get a couple of these spots filled up so we can get this one going. There's Cleveland, Colorado, Chicago White Sox, Detroit, Miami, Minnesota, Oakland, San Diego, San Francisco, Toronto, and Washington. All still available. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and auction a couple of these off real quick so that we can run this one. And we will start it just, you know, the auction style. Open up to anybody that's in the chat right now. If you'd like to grab a spot and see it ripped right now you can so we'll start things off with the cleveland guardians we're auctioning the cleveland guardians you get every single card from all six hobby boxes cleveland on the clock first and then all you have to do is paypal so you've seen our auctions on sundays and thursday nights we'll get some of these filled timmy tea time says you saw my girlfriend sophia at the mall today she mentioned that she said she saw you in the food court that's pretty awesome chris is at five she got paid today so she went out and picked up some outfits at the at the mall and uh, got some nice summer wear. $5 is the opening bid to Chris Randall with the Cleveland Guardians. Matthew Johnson out. Andrew Jojic bids 10 on Cleveland. Jared's at 15. Michael Hatchew is not going to let Detroit get to it. My, Michael Hatchew just picked up Detroit, so Detroit's not going to get to the auction block. They, he's picked it up. All right, give me a second. I just realized that I don't have the stream opened up to type the word end in. It's a little bonus bidding, a couple seconds here. And we've got the Cleveland Guardians. Okay, it's making me watch a freaking ad. <laughs> More bonus time. This is for the Cleveland round, or um, the Heritage round. 
Six. So, all right, there I got the word end in. This is going to go to Travis Williams. So, Travis, you go ahead and send on over. This one is yours, Travis Williams, to speed things up a little bit. We'll do a double one next. We got two teams for one price. It's the Colorado Rockies. We get all the Colorado Rockies, and you also get all the Chicago White Sox. So this is for Heritage. Six boxes of Heritage. I don't know. Maybe I should put that on there so you, you some people ask, what's this for? Six boxes, all every single card. I'll sort them all out. Jared starts it at five. Chris is at 20. All ever since I've watched your videos for like the past six months. Nice. I appreciate you watching. 25 is the high on this. Jared is at 25. Thank you. So he just brought in some reinforcements. A prime and Belvita factors. Which I never had Belvita before I met Sophia. We're at 30 on this one. All right, we'll clear this one off. And we'll see who's got the Colorado Rockies and White Sox. Looks like this one is going to go to Maria Ann. So Maria Ann will have these. Maria Robinson, I believe. So we'll put you on the list. Go ahead and send on over. We still have the following teams left available if you want to grab them before they go to the auction block. We have... we've. We filled about half of the break. We only have seven teams left. We got Miami, Minnesota, Oakland, San Diego, San Francisco, Toronto, and Washington. So next up, we will do the Miami Marlins and Minnesota Twins. Same deal. You get two teams. So Miami and Minnesota. You get both of them. If you can eat Belvita, you're a better man than me, says Tim. I, I, they're pretty good. We don't have much else in the house right now, but this one's up for grab. You get the, both the Marlins and the Minnesota Twins. Jared starts, starts off at 5. David's at 11. Why don't you pass live? Stay on YouTube to watch later. They all do. The only ones that I don't keep on YouTube are the auctions. Because they have very poor rewatch time. And uh, that overall that brings down the channel and like the channel um, on the algorithm. It kind of brings down your rewatch time and stuff like that. And it hurts other videos. So I always take those down because most people don't want to watch an auction. Maybe some people do. But most people probably don't want to watch something that's you know not live and they can't participate in. Colorado and the White Sox just paid for by Maria. Thank you very much. And this one is closed out. Mason's Collectibles has it at $200. Yeah, that's probably a legit bid. I'm just curious. Let's check out Mason Collectibles' channel. He has been a subscriber for three years. He has one time out. So Mason's Collectibles, I think that that might be a fake bid. So I'm going to take Raphael Soto's 36. Raphael Soto, you've got it. I'll put you down. You can go ahead and send in payment right now for these two teams, the Miami Marlins and also the Minnesota Twins. Next up, might be a mistake. It might be. We have the San Diego Padres in this next one. And... We'll put them with the good old Oakland A's. So a couple of West teams. You get both of those. Just to kind of speed this up. We'll start this one right now. So two more teams, Oakland and San Diego. Raphael Soto, you got it. Yep. I don't think we have the mix in here tonight calling them, at least not yet. So I, I think most of us are used to seeing that official call. But you got it. Yep. Robert's at 25. On this one. Chris is at 40. San Diego and Oakland. Roberts at 45. Ross says, Autos are 1 in 110 hobby packs and 1 in 220. If hobby is 100, the blasters are the way to go. Uh, autos are 1 in 100. Auto, is that right? 
one in 110. So what's the box odds on that, Ross? Is that one in every like freaking five and a half boxes? Something like that. We'll see. We're going to open a half case of this right now. All right, this is going to go to Drew Baker is going to get both of these. So Drew Baker, you've got Oakland and also you've got San Diego. Your name's on them on the list. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. 62, Drew, you've got it. Next up, we've got the San Francisco Giants. I'm going to just do all of them. The kitchen sink. These are all the remaining teams that are left, and this break will be sold out. You'll have the San Francisco Giants. You'll get all of their cards. You'll get the Toronto Blue Jays, and you'll also get all of the Washington Nationals. So three teams, all three in this half case. Or let's do it all right now, and then we'll get ripping into some heritage which my preview video is sputtering along now. In case you're wondering, it's at 37%. It was at 16%, like 16 minutes ago, so it's getting there. We're at $50 on all three of these. Michael Hatch is in the lead on these three. Chris is at 75 on these three. Hope that you guys can pull one of those autos or maybe some numbered cards, some short prints. And then we'll get into it. We'll get this first one going. All right, this one is going to go. We'll check the list over here and see who has it. They are not available. You know what? They actually are available in the stores. Raphael's paid. This is going to go to, looks like Robert is going to get this one at 80. So, Robert, you've got it. I'll put your name on it on all three of these teams. I went to a store today, and they, they actually had these out. It's not release day until technically tomorrow or midnight tonight, but... They had them out. $100 a box. Like, I think they were $5 a pack. Could have bought them right then and there. But I got a preview video coming for you, so I didn't buy any. All right, so Heritage Round 1. It's all filled up. Thanks for helping fill out those teams that weren't picked up. It's all sold out. If you'd like to get another round going, we have Big League 8 only has 13 spots left. This is spots left. And Mixer number 1. Has 13 spots left. Bowman Deception has 18. Those are the closest ones going after Heritage. So let's get into this. Heritage. Here we go. Here's box number one. Good luck to everybody in this first round. I'll read off the names in case you've forgotten what team you have. We've got Kevin Gillette with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Chris Paparelli has the Atlanta Braves. Ryan Oster with the Baltimore Orioles, who Jackson Holiday just joined them in the big leagues. Matt Durfee has Boston. Chris Randall has the Cubs. J.R. Reynolds has the Cincinnati Reds. Travis, there's our box topper. It's going to be Buddy Bradford going to the White Sox, which is just picked up by Maria. But Travis has the Cleveland Guardians. Maria has the Colorado Rockies along with the White Sox. Then we got Michael Hatch, who's got Detroit. Maria has Houston. Robert has Kansas City. Marie has the Los Angeles Angels. Juan Solis has the Dodgers. Rafael Soto has Miami. Anthony Collins has the Milwaukee Brewers. Rafael Soto has the Minnesota Twins. Timothy Liskey has the Mets. J.R. Reynolds has the Yankees. Drew Baker with the Oakland A's. Brian Hughes has Philadelphia. Michael Gunter has Pittsburgh. Drew Baker has San Diego. Andrew Jojic, he just picked up the Seattle Mariners. Robert O. has San Francisco, Toronto, and Washington. Roy has St. Louis and Jackson Whitley with Tampa Bay along with Josh Bonham. We've got the All right, let's get into these. Garrett Cole on the cover of the box, 24 packs per box. And they these are over $100 per box in stores. All these cards that are flipped upside down, I was like, wait a minute, why is that upside down in the preview video? It took me a minute to realize, but they're short prints. So Connor and Joe's short print right there. I was like, is that an image variation? And then after the third one, I was like, okay. I realize now it is a short print. It's the World Series card with Marcus Semyon on the front, Texas and Arizona. Texas would go on to win it all. Here's another short print, Mitch Garver. Mitch Garver makes some of these common cards worth something. We got Oswaldo Cabrera, who's been decent. Spencer Strider might be lost to Tommy John. Hopefully not. That would be bad. Matt McLean gets a rookie gold club. cup. Sparky Anderson. Trent Grissom rocking the mustache. Not a very good hitter. 
Chris Bassett, these are one in every 12 packs. So these whites, you'll find them probably about two per box. Red Zone Rip says, you better get up awfully early in the morning if you're going to be Josh to get Texas. He is the Texas guy. Yep, we'll see what we've got going. White Sox, Tom points out, yep, 1 to 100 are now short prints. They flipped the script there. Ross says, when will these boxes come down in price? Oh, they'll, they'll come down in price for sure. I think maybe once um, Tops sees that they're not really moving all that many of them through their distributors and stuff, then they'll start to lower the price on the reorders, and then that'll eventually get passed on. It might take a, a month or two, but yeah, I think that you'll probably see these down again. If you take a look at Heritage High Number, I, I brought this up in the preview video. Heritage high number is way down to $45 a box. Look at this. Heritage, 2023 Heritage. This is just last year. A hobby box now is 63 And the Heritage high number is literally $44.95. That's a hobby box right there. So, I, you know, I don't see the price staying at $103, which is where they're at right now on blowout cards. I mean, I get that people love the 75 design. I love the 75 design too, but I don't know. We have a really nice card here. Take a look at this. This is Gunner, number to 999 Chrome. It's a beautiful card right here. Walk off rips says, look out for color variations. They have color written over the card number on the back. All right, good tip right there. And we've got card number one of the set, 70th Steel, Ronald Acuna Jr., and that is a short print. Very nice card right there for the Atlanta Braves in this team break. Ross says autos are one in every five boxes in this product. That's usually what they are. Here we go with our hit. It's going to be Corey Seager. It goes to Josh of the Texas Rangers. Corey Seager, game used jersey. It's not numbered. Sometimes you'll find the relics can be hand numbered. We've got a... Pablo Lopez short print card right here. Short prints are flipped upside down. You'll probably see these out in stores, I would imagine, this weekend. Might be coming on the shelves near you. Lester doesn't like the printed autos. We haven't pulled an auto yet tonight, but I imagine, like other years of Heritage, the autos will be signed in blue. So that way that they're distinguishable from the printed autos. And also, you'll be able to see... Typically at the bottom of the card, it says certified tops auto or something like that. Genuine says, how's everybody doing tonight? And we're doing fine. I hope you're all doing fine too. Chris Randall's doing well. Trout just hit another bomb, says Josh Carlson. So Mike Trout's up to five homers. Man. I want to get his PSA 10 rookie card. I was kind of waiting for his decline to come around to grab it because I think it'll go back up once he makes the Hall of Fame inevitably someday, probably as maybe even unanimous. Jonathan India, that's a short print. But he is off to a fantastic start. Five home runs. Some people thought that maybe he wouldn't be able to put up the six home runs, says Eminem. Wow. He's even been doing better than I thought. Random Team Big League is still open. Yes, indeed. There's Ellie De La Cruz right there. That's his rookie card. Yeah, the red print autos. Those are probably numbered to 75. At least that's what they did in the past. There's another Ellie De La Cruz. Here we go. Cincinnati Reds. You got the base, Ellie, that you just saw, JR. Now you get an Ellie De La Cruz. I don't know if you can see this because it's written in size 3 font, but if we zoom in, you will see we have an image variation right there. See that on the 473 right above it? And never so small font. Image variation of Ellie De La Cruz. A very good hit right there. And that one's going to go to J.R. Reynolds. So, J.R., congratulations on this one right there. Chris says, how much are spots in a mixed break? Usually they go from 20s to the average team's probably around, around 30. We got Ryan Patrick McMahon. Some of the teams that are a little more expensive, like the Reds, might go into the 60s or 70s. 
because of cards like that. That LED De La Cruz, I don't know what that's going for, but it's probably going to be worth a, a decent amount, I would imagine. Hey, Jeremy, doing pretty well tonight. Hope everyone's having a very fantastic evening on this Tuesday. Ellie has six errors already. Wow. Six errors. A lot of strikeouts. Got a white border card here. Again, there's two of those per box. That is a 1971 MVP card. I wonder how they handled the 79 MVP since there was co-MVPs in the National League with Willie Stargell and Keith Hernandez tying that year in the National League. Here's our last stack of box number one. So just one box in. We still have a whole bunch more to go. A half case of these is there's 12 boxes in the case. Walk off rip says it's nice that they give some indication of the variations. Yeah, they always do that with these heritage sets. It's typically a little notation around the numbers from previous years as well. I like the fact that they flip over the short prints too. It makes it easier. But the uh the image variations, you're gonna you're gonna have to see those on your own, I guess. Figure out that for yourself. We've got Jameson Tyon, that's gonna be a short print right there. There's Verdugo. His Yankees uniform. Craig Kimbrell doing his little pose. I was watching the game with Kimbrell versus the Pirates. And I was like, why does he still do that? <laughs> Everything's on the, the pitch calm now. So he doesn't even, they don't even give the signs anymore. The catcher just types it in on his little pad there. I guess relayed out. But I guess it's just comfort. There's the 2019 MVPs. Cody Bellinger with Mike Trout. Bellinger still hasn't really replicated that 2019 success, although he's getting getting around. Gabriel Arias had a good season last year. So good that he thought that he could get a $200 million contract. And he was wrong. Essentially, he's on a one-year deal. I think it's a couple years with an opt-out. They're starting Marte Nick Gonzalez. The first box is in the books. Gives us a relic. The best card so far was the Ellie De La Cruz image variation tonight. That was only one box. Let's go on to box number two. Here it is. Again, it's six boxes here we're busting through. We'll see what we can find in this next one on this release day. Or I guess release, release Eve. This product was starting to pop up, by the way, all over the place on Friday. So this has been out there for a while. We've got a big old box topper of Billy Williams. Oversized 75. So that's kind of neat. Send that one off to the Oakland A's. All right, let's see what else we have. I do have a new release video of this, by the way, but it is moving along at just painfully slow speeds. 50% done right now. It's been uploading for probably a little over an hour. Probably It might not go up till around midnight at this rate. What are my thoughts of the Pirates? Well, I'm super happy, Kenny. I don't know if you watched my... On opening day, I did a video of 2020 Tops opening day, and I, I picked my division winners for each division, and I picked the Pirates to win the division. I really like their bullpen. I didn't think their hitting would be this good. Their hitting has really come along, but... Bullpen really let us down today. David Bednar giving up four runs, blowing the save. Matthew says, Jabs MLB Players Association believes the pitch counts the cause. Yeah, I saw the uh, the release that they put out there, and MLB shot back and said there's no proof of that. And they said there's many years of research that have gone into this pitch clock in the minor leagues. They have not seen any indication that a pitch clock leads to increased injuries. So I don't know. It's There's something going on this year, it seems like. All these players getting hurt. It could really, uh, I mean, you lose like an ace, like a Spencer Strider. I mean, the Braves can probably absorb that loss because they're just so talented in many other reasons, but their areas. But we've got some teams that they lose their ace, and that might be the big difference between them making the playoffs and not. Yeah, Ross, they shorten up the pitch clock again. What is it like 12 seconds now when there's no one on base? Was it, was it 15 seconds last year? Now it's 12. Watching the game. It's like most of these pitchers just barely get the pitch off in time. It's like it always comes down to the last one or two seconds. Oscar Colas, that is a white border card for the White Sox. These white border cards, they're not numbered. They do have a little notation there in case you 
I can't tell that you have something interesting. I'll, I'll zoom in on it. It says white border, just in case you can't tell. There's a giant white border around the card. One in every 12 packs, two per box on those. No hit yet in this next box. So let's get into the next stack. Let's see what we've got in these. Ross says, pitchers should intentionally walk the first batter every inning so they have more time to throw. Yeah, they do get more time to throw with runners on base, but you walk the first batter of an inning, I don't, I don't know what the stats are of that player coming around to score, but I would say probably 30% of the time or something they're going to come around to score. Maybe if the team is blowing somebody out, they've got a big lead, but most pitchers don't want to sacrifice their ERA. There's Ellie De La Cruz, and would you believe it? That's the base card. For a second, I thought we had the, I thought we had another image variation. What's my next live stream? We will be live. We might be live tomorrow. What not? I'm still waiting to hear back from them. They said, oh, we should, we should be in touch, but I haven't heard back from them. So probably Thursday. It looks like another consignment just came in today. There's J Rod game used jersey card for Seattle. Andrew Jojic is going to get the nice. Julio Rodriguez relic. So we are two for two on relics. There's a Freddie Freeman short print. Cards numbered one through 100 are short prints. New Age Performers, those are pretty common. Big Slugger says, I love your videos. This is the first live stream that I actually ever watched. I'm glad to have you aboard. I always wonder sometimes if maybe if, if I did a live stream during the day, if that would allow some other folks that can't usually watch during the evenings to check it out. I might try that in the summer when I am off work. All right, here we go with this next stack. This is still just box number two here. We haven't gotten to the flying through the cards section yet. Still going pretty slow. As this is still brand new. Once we see this a bunch, then we'll start to pick up the pace a little bit. I haven't even put the preview video out yet. I'm still waiting for it to upload. Another upside down card. It's going to be Patrick Sandoval short print. Do I like Lars Newbar? I like his name. I don't really care too much about him just for me it's just kind of like just an average guy i kind of tend to lean towards certain players like usually it's star players like that bobby witt that you just saw there big flats is what's up chat 75 tops is looking good it does look good the 70s has some good designs and 75 would probably be the best design from the 70s. Since we have almost 500 people in here, let's do a poll. I feel like if I put a poll up for the 70s designs, that that might skirt, but I don't know. Maybe we should do a... I feel like most people probably vote for 75. Let's think about doing a, a, a poll and seeing what the best design is. So if you think of the 70s designs, 1970, I think, is pretty boring. It's got that all gray border. 71 is, it's it's okay. It's all black all the way around. 72 is kind of similar to 75. It's kind of like a little curved team name at the top. Just think of like a Carlton Fisk rookie card. 72 is pretty good. There's George Springer Black. So our first black border card of the night and we also have right behind it the Red Sox Raphael Devers chrome card number 299 White Sox Tom says 72 is a little too hippie looking 73 is pretty nice kind of uh kind of simple 74 has a little like banners at the top and bottom there's Luis Severino in his Mets uniform I kind of like 78 tops, too. I think 78's pretty nice. 89's 
89 is, I feel like 89 is always kind of underrated, the 89 design. I think kind of like the height of the baseball card collecting era, people would see 89 tops and be like, oh, that's freaking 89 tops. I hate that set. One thing I didn't like about 89 tops, if I could find something wrong about it, that I would change. And I love the 89 top set because that was the year I started collecting baseball cards. That was my first year. I started buying cards like crazy in 89. That's the year I got addicted to baseball cards. But the one thing I would change is it seems like almost every picture, they're just standing around during spring training. It's like there's not a lot of action going on on those cards. So got the next stacks of heritage here. They could maybe spice it up a little bit. That would be great. Here's box number three. Michael says, I collected in 75. Michigan was one of the states to the ministry. Byron likes 62 and 87. 87 is a classic design. Yep. 62 wood grain, and they brought it back in 87. I wonder if they'll bring it back again. So, if you, I don't, I'm trying to think, would they would they bring it back again? What's the difference in years there? That was like 25 years between 62 and 87. So, if they would have brought it back, you would have thought that they probably would have brought it back 25 years after 1987, which would have been 2012, and they didn't. I they, I feel like they missed a big, big opportunity there. They should have brought it back. They should have brought the wood grain back in 2012. What were they doing? What were they thinking? It would have made sense. Every 25 years, bring back a wood style design. We've oh look at this, guys. We've got a hot box. And these purple parallels are sweet. Look, every single pack is going to have the purple hot box parallels. There you see Juan Soto in his Yankees jersey. So we'll start getting all these in the sleeve section to get sleeved up. Flashback, Alt Air 880, the first commercially successful personal computer. I was thinking about that the other day. I remember sitting in like a first or second grade computer lab on a monitor. It was an Apple computer. It had like a floppy disk. You had to put in to boot it up. And the screen was all green. Like all the text was green. My, how far we've come technology-wise in like... 30 to 35 years. Here's the next hit. It's Pete Alonso game used jersey for the New York Mets. This one goes to Timothy Lischke. And we are three for three on relics. Got a hot box going on here. Giancarlo Stanton. What do you think of John Sterling's new Giancarlo home run call? He's like singing a song. It's kind of weird. I don't think I like it. There's Carlos Correa. Some of the Mets or the Yankees fans out there will probably know what I'm talking about. He used to speak another language. Was it was it Portuguese or something? Something like Giancarlo and Stoparlo rhymed. So he said some phrase, like, Giancarlo, you can't stop him. But now he's, like, singing a song. Because I, I, don't, I don't know if I like it. I don't think it works. It's Austin Riley. Because get, he gets so excited for these home runs. And then he has to... And then he has to, like, stop and, like, bring it down a notch to sing this, like, little, like little little ditty it, it's it's really weird like because you can't if you're all excited you can't stop and sing other i don't know otherwise it makes it seem like his whole persona is fake like he's faking his excitement ross says i don't like it i hate stanton and i want him to go like stan or not mike jean carlo stanton has not really had too much success there in new york ryan savage says it's weird it is weird Heard that the other day, and I'm like, what is this? A lot of his home run calls are pretty nice. I kind of like them. I've been listening to John Sterling since I was a kid, actually. Used to get him on the old AM radio, only at nights when the when the signal would travel the whole way from New York. All right, it says, if someone joins Patreon, is there a page or access to ask questions? You can just ask here. Ask, just, uh, if you ever have a question about anything, just, uh, I would just say, ask me 
right here, face to face, so to speak. I'll, I'll do my best to answer your questions. There's Jim Duran, hot box. So we got a hot box here. There's Nestor Cortez, nasty Nestor. There's Chris Randall. He misses Radio Shack. I remember Radio Shack in the mall. We were out at uh, the card store here in town the other day, and there's still a Radio Shack like storefront. It literally looks like it would be open. And it feels like, there's a Radio Shack here? that Those still exist? It's like, I don't think so. Nick Pavetta. Jose Barrios. Yeah, 660. Yep, that's what we got it on, Kevin. It, used to only, it would only come through at night, though. Once after it got dark. There's Volpe. Having a fantastic season. There's Nico Horner. So Volpe's going to be one to maybe keep an eye on. And hey, that, uh, that Series 2, 2023 Series 2, if you have a hobby box of those on your shelves, maybe keep that sealed because Volpe catches fire. Who knows? He could end up being the best rookie in 2023. And he also got Corbin Carroll in that set along with him. You can get some pretty cheap Series 2 hobby boxes right now. We're talking for like 65 bucks. Antonio's got a Walkman. I remember those. I used to uh I used to have those too. I used to make cassette tapes. A lot of times I'd miss the first few seconds of a song that I like because it comes on and you have to hit like record. Walk off says, You stole my hot box. All those purple Yankees would look good in my PC. Maybe you can work out a deal. J.R. Reynolds. AC said, uh, Casey says AM could turn up their amperage after the sunset. Is that the, is that how it worked? They'd turn up the amperage? I thought that maybe just the radio waves traveled farther because something like maybe the sun broke them down. I, I never really understood that. I still can't really wrap my head around like that radio can broadcast from like hundreds and hundreds of miles away and you can still hear it here. Kind of crazy. Jack Sawinski with the Buckos, Owen White. We really need to find an Ellie De La Cruz purple hot box card. Nick Gonzalez rookie card. The next purple, it's going to be another one of those injured pitchers. Felix Bautista right there. J.J. Blade. I was looking for the Pirates game today on the radio. It's kind of a shame. I'm like, what is this crap? The the it's not even on, on like the uh, the main uh, radio station. Ninety three seven is like it's called the fan here in Pittsburgh. I turn it on. They've got the rights to the Pirates, and they weren't even on. Like some some dumb talk show. So eventually, I found it. It was on like the their sister station, Anthony Rizzo. I used to get all of my baseball info from AM radio. Like I, we never had cable growing up. Timmy T times could, could get KMOX in St. Louis. Yeah, if you would ever kind of like go up and down the dials, you could always usually find a game from somewhere. Ross says you have XM. I do have XM. Yep. So channel eighty nine. MLB Network Radio. I listen to that every day on the way into work and on the way home, too, most times. Keeping myself up to date, as up to date as I can be, on stuff going around the MLB. The Yankees are 11 2. Yeah, how about last year? There was a bunch of talk about how the Yankees might not even reach 500. Like, is this going to be the first year in, like, 40 years they don't finish above 500? They eventually did, just barely. And now they're doing it without this guy. Garrett Cole, he might not be back till June. Who knows? He might need Tommy John. He might not come back this year at all. There's a Nick Gonzalez that is a numbered purple, numbered to 575 for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Merrill Kelly's in here as well for a short print. Henry Davis, first time seeing Henry Davis tonight. This is purple hotbox card, so Pirates getting a couple decent ones here. Michael Gunter. Congrats on those. White Sox Tom says, we lost Moncada, Robert, and Eloy Jimenez all within 11 games. It's all gone. Like your, your best players. Anthony Volpe, speaking of best players. Anthony would listen to the Giants games on KNBR. Yeah, I would always hear the Pittsburgh radio station was KDK. 
We're only halfway through this first round. We've been doing this for 45 minutes. Heritage takes a long time to go through. I guess I am being a little bit slower than usual because it's still brand new to me and I'm kind of taking, taking it all in. Robert says, AM sig signals run on low frequency with large wavelengths. FM is high frequency with short. Large wavelengths travel further and through solid objects where FM do not. There's Raleigh Fingers. No Cubs purple cards for Chris tonight. Maybe you'll have one of the hits here. We'll see. Here's our next one up. I'll try to keep an eye on PayPal and see if anyone else is grabbing other spots. The next closest ones to Gunner, Big League and Mixer 1. Here's the boxes of Mix 1, by the way, if you're curious. Mix 1 just means it's a mixer break. It's 10 boxes. The box is in the Mixer 1. We've got National Treasures from 2023, which will be fun. That's, that's a high-end box. We've got a Jumbo box from 2016 with three hits. Stadium Club Compact from 2023. Archive Signature Series Retired Player Box. A Bowman Chrome Mega Box from 2023. A Breakers Delight Box from Topps Chrome Update is in there. A World Baseball Classic Box is in there as well. Then we've got a Vending Box from Series 2 from 2022, a Holiday Mega, and a Heritage High Number Blaster to round out the 10. We've got Harrison Bader right there. Still a chance of Hot Boxes? Not anymore. There's one Hot Box per case. We got it already. Trey Turner, number two, $9.99. That's the second Tr Turner Chrome card that I pulled. I pulled one in the preview video. AM radio will never go away due to national emergencies, says Byron. There's Clayton Kershaw. That's true. If the internet goes down, how are you going to get the word out to people? The phones don't work. Well, if you got a, if you got a little radio, just got a little battery in there, you'll be able to stay up to, up to uh, date on what's going on. Hopefully it never comes to that where just all communication is out except AM radio. Ross thinks big league's going tonight. We shall see. Corbin Carroll right there. And the hits keep being relics. Andres Jimenez. This is box number four. We are four for four on relics. How many spots left in big league? There's 13. We've got Mackenzie Gore. It is a short print. Jim Condelaria right there. And another short print. It's going to be Shintaro Fujinama from the Orioles. Two stacks left in this round. Checking the preview video out that I filmed like two hours ago now. It's at freaking 63%. It's, man. So it's getting like 10% every 20 minutes. I might be able to get it uploaded by 11.30 tonight. There a Yamamoto rookiness? You know what? I don't think we've pulled one yet. There, I, you would think there would be since he was in big league. You could go and check that out on Beckett and go to their checklist and just do a control F. We'll keep a keen eye out for him now. There's Showtime in his Dodgers uniform, and I think this might just be some sort of short print. It is. That's showtime of him with a little, little guilty smile on his face there. There's an image variation. Shohei Otani with the pursed lips. So a short print for the Dodgers. That's a good one for Juan Solis. Congratulations on that. Giancarlo Cruz, Michael Stanton. I didn't know he had Cruz in the, the name. Richard says, yep. Orioles calling up Jackson Holiday. So the Jackson Holiday era is beginning. 
Where's he going to play at? Is he playing third base? Ross says, there's no Yamamoto at all in this. Weird. So if you want a Yamamoto rookie card, you got to go get Big League. And that's the only place to find it. There's a white border, Byron Buxton. And we've got Michael Lorenzen's home debut and no hitter. Edwin Diaz, now happy to be back. Too bad the Mets are off to a slow start again. Yamamoto should be in series two. He started the season with the Dodgers. Benjamin says he's going to be playing second. All right, so that'd be a nice double play combo. Jackson Holiday and Gunnar Henderson. Or it's just, yeah, that's all they are. It's all relics. If all six boxes are relics, I haven't given my grade on this product yet, by the way. I didn't give one in the preview video. I didn't feel like I had enough information. Yamamoto should be in Bowman next month, says Walk Off Rips. I think Bowman's due out. May 17th. Dylan Cruz, supposedly, from what I've heard, is in it. He'll be the, the big chaser. Gavin Lux. Josh Leinbarger just picked up a Mixer 1. So Mix 1 just gets a little bit of a shot in the arm. So who knows? maybe this one will end up going. National Treasures is in it. We'll see. Josh just picked And Antonio is also... Gonna get in this as well. Antonio, I sent your Jabs family card, I think, two days ago. That should be coming in soon. Let me see here. Mix one. Or maybe it was yesterday. All the days kind of mixed together sometimes. Josh Leinbarger taking one and mix one. And Antonio says, I, I know I got some spots in Big League and Bowman's best, but let's get a spot in mix one. So Antonio is in as well. So we got two people just hopped into mixer number one. Now there's 11 spots left. That one's in the lead for the next most likely one to go tonight. Yep, you've got the that's I think that's the only card that I've signed so far, too. You got the the only autographed one. Going hamburger says, Do I have to be a member to join into the breaks? A Patreon member, yeah. Sometimes to fill it out, like we did tonight, we'll open it up. And sell off a couple spots. So if, um, like, for example, if that mix one is just a couple spots shy, we might open up to other people just so we can fill it out. But, yeah, typically, it's just only Patreon members. Here's box number five of six in this long heritage. Hour-long break here. We've got a Rick Auerbach original. Another mix one, I think, just came over. So if you are a mix one, buckle up. That one's getting some momentum. Cars are us. Just grabbed one. So cars are us. We'll put you down. It's spot number 20. Is George Brett in this set? I don't know if George Brett's in here or not. He's got the rookie card, him and Robin Yao. That would have been cool if they would have done something to honor them. I don't know if they have an autograph in here or what. You can just go and check the checklist out. Do control F. The only checklist I saw online, I think, was on Beckett's website. How's the product so far? The design is really nice. I like the 75 tops design. The hits, I would say, are kind of blah. And Ross says they do have a special auto. I figured they'd be in there. Wes Heddleston just picked one up and makes her number one. There's another one. Put you down at spot number 21. Thank you, Wes. 30 teams, 30 spots, 21 are now filled for mixer number one, which has a National Treasures box among the boxes. There's Martin Maldonado. That's a short print. Kevin says, in your expert opinion, should the Pirates run Joey Bart out there every game to catch and throw Henry Davis in the outfield? Nah. I would say Henry Davis is a no in the outfield. He played last year out there. He was really bad, and the Pirates have... Their best players right now are outfielders. All of Ari's, he had two home runs today. He's a bench player most of the time. He's really kind of pushing for more playing time. Michael A. Taylor is hitting like, he was hitting 400, but he's been very good as well. Jack Swinski is great against righties. He's also starting to hit lefties. You got Brian Reynolds out there as well. There's really, I think there's room out there for a defensively inept right fielder in Henry Davis. Now, if he was hitting, 
I would say, yeah, good. Throw him out there if he's going to be hitting, if he's on a hot streak, hitting 400 with big time power. But he has not really started to hit yet this year. I think he's got one of the lowest averages on the team in zero home runs. If he hits, maybe. And that, that's also contingent on Joey Bart continuing to hit. Rafael Soto just sent in for Mixer 1. There's another one. Rafael Soto will put you on the list. You're at spot number 22. Thank you very much. Mixer number 1 getting closer. The mix has joined us. He says, good luck to everyone in the breaks. Here we go with this next stack of Heritage on this Heritage Eve. Release day Eve. Carrie Carpenter. Uh, Ross says, are we going to uh, find the Bill Gates or Elvis Presley one of one cut autos? Those would be big chasers in this. And there's the next hit. It's Kyle Tucker. I wish we could find an autograph. We have not found a single autograph yet. Kyle Tucker game used memorabilia card. Goes to to Houston. I've opened six boxes from this case. One of them in the preview video. We have not found a single autograph. The odds, according to Ross, for the autos are one in every 110. So I do not know why these are 100 and some dollars a box. Honestly... I think they should be more like 55, like they were for Heritage High Number. There's out of 375, Clayton Kershaw for the Dodgers. Tops is stingy, says Michael. Well, I mean, a lot of times they, they can get these rookies to sign a bunch of autos. Ryan says, do you think Don Manning will make the Hall of Fame? I do not. I think that he did have a really great prime, but it wasn't long enough. Vic says, it's already been said, but I'm a huge fan of 75. The precursor to 1990 Tops. Kind of gave way, morphed into 1990 Tops. I never even thought about that. It's in a much lower print run on the Heritage, so they didn't print it to the moon, says Casey. So that could have something to do with why the price is more. So you make less of something. You charge more for it, so in the end, you still make the same amount of money. I don't know what they make on a run of hair. Let's say they make $10 million off of all of their heritage products or whatever. Well, if they print less and make less boxes, then they've got to charge a little more to still make the exact same $10 million. There's Jason Dominguez for the Yankees. Jeff Bagwell and Frank Thomas, your 94 MVPs. I wonder why. I wonder, man, they must have had some huge season. Where's Tony Gwynn or Matt Williams for the MVP? Jeff Bagwell won it. 1994 was the year that uh, Matt Williams was chasing after 61 home runs, and Tony Gwynn was chasing after 400. The mix is that picture of Jason D that he just strike out. Yeah, it's a bad picture. He's wa I, I think he's walking back to the dugout after a strikeout. It's a weird, weird picture. But it looks that way. Joe Kelly, the white border. Brady says, I, I ordered a, a couple top now cards the past couple weeks. When am I shipping out your mystery boxes? Talks, I actually, to the, everyone that ordered theirs, except for you, I shipped them already. Except yours, because yours came in late in the evening. So I'll get yours probably out tomorrow. Unless I have some time tonight before I go to bed. I'll put it all together. It doesn't take all that long. I just go and grab a, a box out of each case. All together, there's... What is there? Like oh, Six hangers. Five blasters. Two hobby boxes. A signed baseball. I thought that'd be a nice way to move a little bit of product. And maybe I'll do one of those each month. Just just uh, switch them up a little bit. 
with unopened inventory. There's Jake Rogers Black, our second black one of the evening. Got a John Carlos Stanton and Sophia serenades us out there. <laughs> I don't know if she realized that we could hear her singing. I don't know if and maybe that didn't come through if you didn't hear that. There's Drew Rome was the last one. Last box in this round. Why can't every Topps baseball product have the same odds as Big League? I know. Big League was so good with the autos. Then it's just like, start being cheap. Hey, we all just heard you sing. No way. Yeah, you just belted that out. That's asking quiet. No, you you let that go. It was <laughs> it was super okay. loud. Even the, even the mix said he, he heard you sing. Really? It's not a good... Mm. You, you want to sing something else? No way. You going to bed now? Yeah. I'll be up in probably an hour or so. The Hawks heard you. <laughs> the mix says that was soulful, Sophia. Hmm. She's officially embarrassed. <laughs> Next, we've got Willie Montanez in this final box. Who knows? This could be the last box of the night. We'll see. We have mix one, which is getting close. We'll try to give it as many opportunities as it can to fill. There's 22 spots filled out of the 30. And Tony says, you should have my horse fly relic yet. I have not even found that yet. Once It won't be found until it's cleaned. Somewhere over in the corner, I smacked that thing. Look at this giant horse flying here buzzing around. I smacked it with the whiteboard right out of the air. With this guy. Pummeled itself off the wall, fell onto the carpet, and I saw it down there. I thought it was dead, and then it started walking around a little bit. And then it caught up and started having to go at me again. And got it a second time. And uh, haven't seen it since. What was that? Was that Saturday night? I can't remember. Maybe it was during Sunday night's auction. Here's our next box. Are we finally going to find... Our first autograph. We'll see. The mix response. I think the live price, it's it's on Patreon there. If you want to check it out. I don't have it up in front of me right now. Show you a tiny base. I can't go to bed until this preview video is done uploading too. Craig Kimbrell. I wonder if he'll be a Hall of Famer. 400 plus saves. Does he get in the Hall of Fame? I feel like... With some of these other closers that are in the Hall of Fame, like Lee Smith and Bruce Suter, that Craig Kimbrell will probably get in as well. I mean, Lee Smith, 478 saves. His war was only 28.9, which, I mean, if you have a 28.9 war as a position player, you're not getting anywhere close to the Hall of Fame. You're probably falling off the ballot right away. Bruce Suter had 300 saves, exactly. 24 career war. Let's check out Craig Kimbrell. These are some of the lesser closers. Craig Kimbrell has slowed down a bit. Craig Kimbrell, 418, 23.4 war. So, eh, I to me, he's not a Hall of Famer, I don't think. I feel like if he can continue to put up numbers, if he gets to over 500 saves, then I'll, I'll go ahead and say, okay, we can probably let him in. He's 36 years old. So he would need to average what? Over the next let's say let's say he plays until he's 40. 418, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. That's five more seasons if you include this season. Yeah, maybe. If he averages like 15 to 20 saves a season. I think if he gets to 500, you can probably say he's in there. He was so good with the Red Sox. He's kind of been up and down and up and down since the whole holdout. Remember when he signed with the Cubs in 2019? He held out for a long time. He missed spring training because he wanted a bigger contract. Eventually signed with the Cubs, and he was terrible with the Cubs. There's Brendan Donovan. It's a white border. Get that one sleeved up. Jaron Duran, short print. So we're into our last box of heritage here. 
it's taken over an hour to get through just a half case. And Zach Gallon again, game used jersey for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So seven boxes have been opened. Key says, what about booing the Pirates closer? David Bednar has not been David Bednar this year. He has not been very good. He's blown multiple saves. Lost the game today, even though he's a Pittsburgh guy. I didn't get a chance to see the end. I just saw the uh, the box score. Did he get booed off the field? You know, that is, that is rough. David Bednar being a hometown guy and also being... Our team's all-star last year. That's that's rough. Ross says, "How many spots are left to mix for one in big league? Big league is big league is thirteen away, and um, I think mix one is like eight away. So it, definitely, mix one looks like the one that's going to go if it goes." Timmy says, "Bednar still hurt. So what happens with this? Does Bednar just do they put him on the injured list and let?" A role does Chapman take over? I mean, Chapman definitely has closing experience, although the past few years it's kind of been a little bit of a roller coaster. We have Miggy and also Kutch. I like that card a lot. It's a white border card. There's Jason Dominguez again. Cubs and Padres are playing right now, says Chris Kodai Senga. Well, you can gain a game on the Pirates as they blew it again, or David Bednar blew it again today. At least in, I think, a couple of those blown saves, they were able to come back and win. I think, like, against the Marlins, they came back and win. There's Tyler Stevenson short print. And so many short prints. The hit pile is pretty large, and it's because of all these short print cards. One in every three packs. Here's the last stack in this round. And we'll see if anyone else is hopping in here. White Sox Tom says, Chapman looked shaky in the World Series. He's been good with the Pirates. He's pumping 101 miles an hour. Slider looks good. Control has been, this first week, I don't think he walked a batter. So he's been good so far. And I don't know, maybe he's got, uh, maybe he's got some extra motivation. He hasn't given up a run yet this year. Four innings pitched, eight strikeouts. And uh, the number that, jumps off the page is just one walk. His walks in the past has kind of been an issue for him, especially in New York. If you own the A's, would you get Bauer for the minimum? If I owned any team, I would get Trevor Bauer for the minimum. I don't know why some of these teams... I don't know if these teams have been told by Rob Manfred, hey, you know what? Guess what? You sign Trevor Bauer, then I'm coming for you. I will find something to get you on if you sign if you sign Trevor Bauer. I feel like they're colluding against him. Much the same as they colluded against Barry Bonds. Like Barry Bonds was when he was kind of blackballed out of baseball after the well, after 07, he was like the best player in the league in 2007. And he goes into free agency, the Giants don't re-sign him. Nobody signs him. He does I mean, he has that Balco thing hanging over him. But nobody signed him. And he said, I'll literally play for the minimum. I will play for basically nothing. You know what his OPS was his last year in the major leagues, Barry Bonds? It was over 1,000. I mean, if, you, if you're over 1,000 OPS, most seasons you're winning an MVP award. Or you're at least going to be top three for MVP. His OPS was 1,045 his last year. And uh, it looks like he didn't get a single MVP vote either, despite that. Crazy. 480 on base percentage. He definitely could have still played. But he was colluded. And, and I don't think... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he ever sued MLB or anything. I don't think he ever... Anything ever even came of that. So Trevor Bauer, probably... Because of that past precedence, he might just be out of luck. I don't, I, I don't know. There's Gary Sanchez. I'd like to say Trevor Bauer should sue MLB... And get all of his lost wages and then some. 
I think that's I think Trevor's a smart guy. I think that's eventually what he'll probably do. He's not gonna sue them right now because he's trying to be in their good graces. There's Dean Dean Kramer. If he's suing MLB and having all this negative attention around him, then no team's ever gonna sign him. But I think maybe eventually that, that lawsuit comes down the pike. That that's that's what I'm saying, Mix. If if he sues MLB, he'll probably never play again. All right, so that one's in the books. Heritage, a whole bunch of Heritage rounds. So let's go ahead and show you what we have left. All right, so in this mixer round, there is currently, if you want to get in this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight spots left if you want to get in that one. Otherwise, this one, this will close out the night. So we'll see if we get mixer one going. I'll go through the boxes. Once again, to show you what's in here, we've got National Treasures in Mixer 1. We've got an old Jumbo box with three hits in it from 2016. And then there's some other stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head because there's like 10 boxes in here. All right, so here's Mixer 1. If you guys want to run it tonight, we can. Otherwise, we'll give it a little more time to fill. But National Treasures is in here. High-end box from Panini. One of the only nice things left on the Panini, Panini roster. And there's a Topps Chrome Update box. And here there's Heritage Retired. You got the Jumbo box of 2016. Topps Update. And then there's like a Bowman Chrome Mega Box. There's five. The other five boxes in here, you got a World Baseball Classic box. And then we've got a Stadium Club Compact Box. I don't think I can fit any more on the screen, but there's a Heritage Heinenberg Blaster, a Holiday Mega, and a Vending Box of 2022 Series 2. So we'll put that out there in case anyone wants to run this one. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll probably let this one go to next week, and then I'll, I'll just force it next week. I don't want to force more than maybe one break a week. Like for a force would be like if a break's not filled, then I just force it to go either by I take spots or I just auction off some spots so it can run. So if you want to grab some spots, you can you can say, Hey, I'll, I'm in or whatever. Community three and two was nice, it says Brian Charles. It sure was, that was a nice product. Studio says, Dennis O, mix one, let's go. Is Dennis O hopping in? Is that what you're saying? Or is that Dennis O right there? Dennis O says he might be in. So T says, I feel like I haven't seen a live stream in two months, but it's only been a week since. I think we were, we were live on Sunday night with an auction. We were live on Saturday over on Patreon. Perceived Power Sports just grabbed one. We're down to seven spots left. I'll take a spot at, as well. Robert says, I can go for in for a couple spots. I don't think Zach Cranky is signed, Dr. D. I think he's still out there. Polo, the live price on this. Let me go fire Patreon. Live price is 67 on Mixer number one. I sent your uh so I sent your Saturday one of one Garrett Cole out to you today, along with the other stuff. Joe T loves the rips. Yeah, I mean, everyone likes different things for sure. By the way, you should know, uh, we, we do rip stuff in those auctions too. Like I'll auction bo a box of cards and then I'll rip it. We'll do, every now and then we'll do some pop-up box wars on there. Juan, I got your payment. There is now one, two, three, four, five, six. Six spots remain. And this now it's five. Antonio just took one. Five spots left. Thanks, Antonio. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Perceived. Five spots left. It's really like four spots because I said I'd take one if need be. I think Robert said he would maybe take a spot or two also. What's the 2016 update go for a box? I, I don't even know. That's been on the shelf for a long time. Joe T says, you're going to be real excited about the mystery boxes I'm putting together. I can't wait to check it out, man. Bill, these mystery boxes here, the live price is 67 on these. 
Dennis grabbed it. He's good for his word. And Chris said he'll grab one. All right, so you can sit there. Looks like we're going to run this one then. We've got four spots left. Kids enjoy the eclipse? Yeah, they did. And we made a video about it for channel members only. If you're a channel member, you can check it out. <laughs> they, uh, they enjoyed it. Hopefully it's something they remember. I still remember going outside and checking out the eclipse when I was in seventh grade. But I don't remember being being like hours long. We were out there for a couple hours. Started at two. Then we stayed out there until like 345. Robert has grabbed two spots. I think we might be sold out, actually. Let me check this. It's close. Sal, he grabbed one. Sal Moya grabbed one. Robert took two. And then Chris said he wanted one. And Chris, that would be the last spot. We're sold out. All right, here we go. We've got to randomize all the spots. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me move these boxes off to the side. Travis, sorry, we just sold out on this one. I don't have any spots left in mixer number one. So let me bring up the good old randomizer, random.org. And we will get this one going here in a second. So we got the list randomizer right here. White Sox Thompson says, I wonder how many people go blind by looking at the sun. Probably not a lot. I think if you look at the sun for a while, I don't think you go blind unless you would just stare at it. But I, I feel like that would become uncomfortable after a while. I think at worst, they will get a hole burned in their retina or whatever, and they'll have a, a blind spot, like a like they'll always see that 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 sun spot. So here's all the spots in this one. It looks like Maria sent in a little late. Maria, let me know. I could put you in another one of the mixer rounds. They're all similarly priced if you want, or I can refund that money. Let me know what to do. Here's all your teams. Chris missed the eclipse due to work. If you weren't in the path of totality, then you didn't miss something that was too crazy. I mean, it was still really cool. It didn't get completely dark where we were at. It kind of got kind of like kind of like the darkness scale would be what you'd see at maybe dusk. Something like that. But here's the teams in this round. We've got Cars Russ getting the Arizona Diamondbacks, Wes Huddleston getting the Atlanta Braves. Michael Dowling in Baltimore. Sal Moy's got Boston. Pablo's got the Cubs. Robbie Gold has Cincinnati. Dennis Okterbeck has Cleveland. Robert has Colorado. Gary Moore has the White Sox. Robert has Detroit. Dennis has the Houston Astros. Ralph has Kansas City. Perceived Power Sports has the Angels. Michael Collins has the Dodgers. Antonio's got the Miami Marlins. Brian Jackson has Milwaukee. Perceived Power Sports has Minnesota. Antonio has the Mets. Um, Kiernan has the New York Yankees. Rafael Soto has Oakland A's. Josh Linebarger has the Phillies. The Pirates are going to Trey Bennett. By the way, Trey, I've got a package to send to you, and there's no address. I've sent you two messages now with no response. There's Robert McGill, San Diego Padres. Brian Jackson with Seattle. Travis Williams has San Francisco. Robert has St. Louis. Chris Randall, Tampa Bay. Manuel Donda has Texas. Juan Solis has Toronto. And Steve has the Washington Nationals. All right, so Maria says refund will work. Let me go take care of that now. Because if I don't take care of it now, I will forget about it. And don't want to keep you waiting, Maria. I appreciate you hopping in there to try to get it sold out. So I'm going to hit the refund button. The mix is, hey, Randall, pull a wander. <laughs> Chris Randall with Tampa Bay. There you go. Maybe you will pull. Watch, watch there be a wander. Could there maybe be a wander? I guess there could be a wander Franco in that. It's 2023. I think this may have come out right before the wander saga. And then just, Trey, are you with us right now? Calling Trey. So... See, Trey, there's, there's no address on your PayPal account anywhere. And um, I've now sent you two messages on April 4th when I was ready to send. No response and sent you another one today. So please give me that address because otherwise you're, you're not going to be able to get your cards because I don't have your address. This is what happens from time to time. Some people will buy into a break and not provide their address and then... They get all mad at me when their cards don't show up. And there's really no way for me to get you your cards without that address. All right, let's get into this. Let me pull out all these boxes here. Let's start off with the worst box of the round. Let's get it out of the way. I hate this box. Sorry, I had to toss it in there. But I have a whole bunch of these in my inventory. 
I'll probably end up just tossing them into the next stockroom box and I'll try to put some nice stuff in there too. I'm not, I think I paid like $40 for that. Obviously I'll value that at probably like $15 or $20 or whatever it is, whatever it's going for. Now when I put those stockroom boxes together, I, I try to use like the going rate because I know stuff does go down. But here we go, mixer number one. Really the only thing to look for in this, this vending box, terrible idea by Tops. I don't know what they're thinking. They have five exclusive insert cards in here on the top then the rest is just all base cards so here's the exclusive parallels and sometimes you can find numbered cards here jeremy Pena rookie card torkelson rookie card bobby witt rookie card so we actually did pretty good with three decent i would say witt one torkelson two jeremy Pena has not been quite the same since his rookie year then we have all these base cards in here and I don't know what I was thinking, but I bought a whole bunch of these cases. I'm not, I don't remember how many, but I know that I have three cases of this crap left. And I just call it crap because it's just, it's just base cards. What was I, what was I thinking? I think when I bought the cases, I didn't know what was going on. I thought, I thought there was a chance of maybe finding an autograph or something in each one, but I should have known from the 80s, what vending boxes were. There's a Spencer Strider rookie card in there. Your other good rookie card you're looking out for is going to be O'Neill Cruz in Series 2 from 2022. And by the way, if you're new to the breaks, every single card gets sent to you. So even though you have no use for JT Brubaker, Trey, you're getting it. <laughs> I don't know. You can do whatever you want with it. But uh, you'll get, like, Manny Machado, future Hall of Famer right there. You'll get all those. So no matter what, we send every single card. Just because, like, if I was in a break, I would want every single card. Because you never know. I remember selling Mike Trout rookie cards in 2011 Update for probably, like, a dollar. I used to do a lot of eBay. And around 2011, I was buying massive lots of 2011 Update. And then I was taking, and I was, there's the O'Neill Cruz rookie card. I was sorting them all out. And then I was doing a pick your card so that people would just buy like random cards and fill out their sets for like 99 cents. You can actually make some good money. It's a ton of work, but you can move your base cards and get some, some money for it. Because most of these cards that are base cards, like Patrick Corbin, who's going to buy that? Who's going to buy that Patrick Corbin? Probably nobody. What's it worth? If I put... That card, that'd be a good, good test. If I put that card out there for five with a five cent price tag on it at a card show in the Nationals area, I don't even think it would sell. But somebody needs it to complete a set and they'll pay for it. I'll pay like 99 cents. They don't have to bust open a bunch more boxes and waste a bunch of money doing that when a lot of times they might not get what they're after. Here's a heritage high number. Working our way up from the lower end boxes to the highest end boxes in this round. This is, I did that to complete my holiday sets. I, I recommend it. We did that in 2021. I tried to complete the 2021 top set with blasters, and it took me like 20 some blasters to do it. Will I be at the National this year in Cleveland? I will, I don't want to say 100% be there, but 99% I'll be there. The Heritage preview video is currently at 82%, which is completely ridiculous. We might actually have a hit in here, too. See something with, like, a white stock. So if you see that right there, we'll see what it is. Robert says, I sell a ton of base cards on eBay. That's another way you can get rid of your base cards. That's always a problem. If you collect cards, you're going to get a lot of base, and sometimes it's just unmanageably too much. Like, all your doubles, like, how many Lucas Giolito cards do you need outside of the one that you complete your set with? Sometimes it might... No, oh, that's not going to be a thick stock card at all. It's going to be a sticker card. Sometimes you can just sell them on Facebook Marketplace. You're right, stamp card. I forgot about, those, I forgot about the stamp cards in these. Looks like we're going to be 0 for 2 as we start off with the lower-end boxes first. Working our way up. Let's do the World Baseball Classic box. That has a shot of autographs. Let's see what we can find in the good old WBC box. 
global stars. Maybe says you could use a dumpster for them. I just I don't feel like I could throw cards away. I don't I feel I don't know. I wouldn't feel right. We got Randy Rose Arena. Obviously, I'll just sort these out by what team they were on in 2022. Was that 2022 or 2023? 2020. So Randy would go to the hey, that's gonna go to you. Chris, you'll get that Randy Rose Arena. Juan said will go to the Padres and so on. Let's see what we've got. So I'll like to the Brewers. There's Mike Trout, Team USA. He'll go to the Angels. Hope we can get an auto in here. There's Masataka Yoshida. Give him to the Boston Red Sox. we got a numbered card. Eric Sogard, numbered out of 75. This Jose Altuve. I thought it was a black border card there. It looks like a black border card, but it's not numbered. And a couple of the... Uh, the flag cards. Unfortunately, there was no autograph in there. Move on to the next box. I should get that Sogard put in my sleeve pile. Let me take it out along with the Jeremy Pena. Next box. Let's see here. Where do we go with next? We'll go with Top's Holiday next. It's a $40 box. We're working our way up. I think it's the least expensive of the boxes that remain. I'm trying to figure out who to give this Sogard to because he didn't play. He hasn't played in a while. Team Czech Republic. He hasn't appeared in a major since 2021. I think he's retired. So we'll, I think I'll give that to the Cubbies because that's the team he played last with. Chicago Cubs. Little ornament there. Bobby Witt. Let's check these out. Holiday time. Paper says I'd buy on eBay to avoid base. Makes this 50-50 shot auto relic in this. That's that's the, I wish it was a 50-50 shot. It's more like a one to thirty-one chance of an auto. Thirty to uh, thirty out of thirty-one chance of a relic in this. They're almost always relics out of holiday. Mix says, "All right, I'll be the oddball and call an auto. We'll see." You should win something if there's an auto in this. They're so rare. Got a Lucas Giolito. Silver. Chris is going to call a relic. Watch it be a Wander Franco relic for you, Chris. There's Volpe. That's a good one. If you take a close look, it is the Volpe Snowman rookie card right there. So it is a... I can't even see these super small fonts. I got to zoom in on it. It is That's the super rare. 516 is the super rare card right there of Anthony Volpe. Very nice. Robert says Sogard played his first half of the year for the Cubs and then retired. So I'll, I'll probably just maybe toss it into the Cubs, Cubs stack. All right, where's the hit in this? Enrique Hernandez. Metallic Snowflake. There's another Volpe. Here it is. It's going to be a relic as expected. Detroit Tigers are going to end up with this one. That's for Robert. Robert McGill gets this. The Riley Green rookie relic. There's Mike Trout. Got Oswaldo Cabrera. That's a good one now. Holiday seems weird to open outside of outside of the season. Adley Rushman rookie. Just a little bit strange. Get those Christmas vibes for it. On to the next. box. Let's see. What should we go with next? Moving some, some heritage cards around so I can fit them all in the 3200 count box here. I think next we'll go with 
guess we'll go with the Bowman Chrome Mega and see what we've got in this one. We still have six boxes left, including this one. There's still Stadium Club Compact. There's still National Treasures. There's Update Jumbo. There's Archive Signature Series Retired Player. There's the Chrome Breakers Delight. White Sox Tom says, at least not opening it in an airport. That is true. That was something else. Got to do what you got to do, I guess. You know what's equally strange? Walmart's still having Wal Holiday on the shelves. I know. I saw there a bunch of Holiday just last week. Why did they not get it out there during the Holiday when people were buying it and it was selling out? They're really slow stocking it. Adley Rushman rookie card in there. Chris says, my Walmart still has Holiday on the shelves. You know what that tells me, Chris? They overpriced it. You know how they raised the price up to $30 a box? Maybe they should go back to... It used to be $19.99, $20 a box for that product for the longest time. And then they raised it to, I think, $25 last year, now $30 this year. Here's the Mojos. Un unfortunately, nothing signed in there. All right, next, let's go to the Stadium Club Compact. There's an autograph in here. I hope it's going to be a good one. You'll probably have multiple Wander Francos, Chris. I saw. I know I saw one in Holiday. All righty, here we go. He says, there ain't no going back. You're, you might be right. I'm trying to think, like, have baseball card pack prices ever receded? Have they ever gone back the other way? I know when I was collecting, every year it was a price increase. You went from 50 cents in 89 to... It was a 45 cents in 89, 50 cents in 90. Then it was like 69 cents in 69 cents in was that 92 went to 69 cents or 93? I think it was like 99 cents in 94, and it just kept on going up. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they ever go down unless unless uh, like White Sox Tom says you wait and they go to the clearance bins. This is a great hit here. Yanner Diaz, rookie auto. Power hitting catcher for the Houston Astros. This is going to go to Dennis Osa. Dennis, congratulations on this one. That's a decent card. There's Volpe. I think that he, Yanni, is going to be a good, good name. Multiple time All Star, I would guess. Dodgers fan says Reco in the house. We'll see if we can pull a big Dodgers hit. Speaking of the Dodgers, there's a Kershaw. It's a triumvirate. Basically, a common, though. That's not a rare insert or anything like that. Yeah, finally an autograph. We got all the worst boxes out of the way first, the ones with the lowest odds of finding an auto. We'll have an autograph in every single box going forward the rest of the way. Finishing off the stadium club for you here. Got Alec Burleson. Chrome card. Sleeve it up. Jeremy's a Guardians fan. All right, let's do the... Big jumbo box of 2016 update. So this is eight years old. This was the year I started my channel. 2016. I started the channel February of 2016. I didn't start with them cards, though, until 2017 Series 1. That was the first box of cards I opened on YouTube. Hey, Baseball Card Maniacs. Doing well. I had my worst commuter of the year today on the way home. Something was up. The Turnpike, there's Tim Anderson, rookie card. Turnpike was all, like, almost at a standstill. And then all of a sudden, it just started going again. So I don't know if there's, like, a rolling closure or something. So I was like, all right, this is ridiculous. So I looked at my ways, and I saw that, looked down the road, and I saw it was all backed up again at the next intersection. There's Trevor Story, your next exchange. So I got off at... The Irwin exit, which is one that I usually avoid because I hate Route 30. There's Blake Snell, rookie card with the Giants. He had a kind of a rough start, his first one out. Aaron Hill, gold card. And then there was doing bridge work on 30. It took me an hour and a half to get home today. I was so mad. I was like, what a waste. Trevor Story. No rookie logo on this. 
I guess it's some sort of, oh, it's a, like a checklist card, Austin Barnes. Austin Barnes may have been one of the worst hitters in the league last year. Can't really hit much, but more of a defensive guy. I got Now I have to check Austin Barnes and see what he's doing this year. It'd be great if he was hitting like 300 right now. He's hitting 500. That's baseball. Austin Barnes, who is a backup catcher for the Dodgers, backs up Will Smith. So he plays like once a week, probably. He only has six at-bats. He has three hits. Last year, his batting average was 180. Again, struggling to hit his weight. His OPS plus, maybe one of the worst in baseball, was 36. Usually the commute takes about an hour, an extra 30 minutes. And also on the way to work, there was a backup. And I actually like... I sat there for like 10 minutes. I'm like, this is this is crazy. I, I can't do this anymore. So I went tearing off on a side street and then cut through um, like a business parking lot to get around get around the lane closure. It's just, uh, it's been a bad day for driving. There's Peter Borges. That's going to be a gold card. And here comes our autograph. It's going to be Socrates Brito. Oh, man. Socrates Brito, an old prospect that failed. Interesting name. Stuck around for a couple years, but wasn't ever a major star. Failed prospect, looking at the stats, he ended up hitting 179 in his career with five home runs. We've got Jose Barrios and Edwin Diaz rookie cards. So there's some nice rookies in here of big-time stars nowadays. But Brito, that's just it. A lot of these prospects, they fail. Socrates Brito. How are you going to make it to New in New York if such a small amount of traffic is? Just, I, I just don't like any traffic. Like, I I expect there to be no traffic because I don't face that. Tip, my typical day, I don't really run into traffic. There's another Blake Snell rookie. Corey Seager rookie is a nice one. So there's good rookies in here. Another decent one with Seager. That's why it was extra annoying because I wasn't expecting it. Got another gold. It's a JMO. Jamison Tyone gold rookie card right there for the Pirates. That's a nice one. Also, have Brandon Nimmo rainbow foil rookie card. Not too bad so far. Kyle Schwaber rookie card. Tons of decent rookies in 2016. Chad Cool, not so decent. I, I don't like Chad Cool. He was one of my least favorite players on the Pirates. I was really glad to see him go. Is he even still around? He make Washington? I don't think so. Ross Stripling. Who is he on now? Is he on Oakland? I think... Doesn't Ross Stripling share my birthday? Where's his birthday? No, he doesn't. 11-23 is his birthday. I don't know why I thought... Maybe it was a different Dodgers pitcher. Ross says, it may take you one hour if you're lucky at rush hour to go from the George Washington Bridge to Queens. Well, that sounds awful. Maybe I could talk Sophia out of coming to New York. I really have no, no offense, Ross. I have no desire to get in New York City at all. I just think it's, it seems like it's just really gone downhill from maybe even the last time I've been there. But Sophia wants to, she wants to see Hamilton on Broadway. I wonder if we can just, if I can talk to her just like, let's just go to Broadway, see the show, and get the heck out of there. Come to Long Island and and New York City, says Ross. It's Drew Pomeranz. Dave says Philly is better. I've been to Philly many times to see the Pirates and Phillies face off. This card looks almost downright scary, this negative card. Kelly Johnson looks like some sort of monster. Take a look at his eyes. 
that is freaky right there. Like he is right out of a horror movie. If he's looking to my eyes in the dugout, I would uh, probably, I don't, I don't know. Looks like he has the power to turn me to stone. And Kelly Johnson, evil super villain card. <laughs> this is going to go to the Mets. That's pretty scary looking. It's the weirdest looking card I've seen in a while. Staring at the eyes of evil zombie card right there for sure. Michael says, wish we should get could get cards in Florida. It's so tough to locate stores. There's some card stores on there. I've been to Florida a couple times. And actually, seem to go there almost every year. And they definitely have some card stores on there. Some of them are really overpriced, though. We were just in Florida. Uh, when was that? January. Went to Florida. For a weekend. The zombie card, I know. John Moskett right there. And here's our relic. It is Noah Syndergaard. Thor. All-star game. And we've got a first pitch card here of Brady Cali. These first pitch cards, they can they can go for some... I don't know. I feel like they used to go for some decent money. Thoughts on the Mariners this year? I think the Mariners will be in the mix. I don't know if they really did much to improve their team. Nashville's a prime candidate. They're probably the most likely to get a team when baseball expands. Manfred keeps like pushing it all down the road here. Here's a great card. Blake Snell, rookie gold. So, Chris, you get... One of the top rookies in a goal right there. Very, very nice. Congratulations on that one, Albert Amora. Blake Snell, of course, one of the top free agents of this offseason. Ended up signing with the Giants. We've got Aubrey Plaza. I don't know who that is. Three packs left in this box. It's as hard to expand MLB when the one franchise, the A's, is actively a dumpster fire that has no home. Yeah, but there's, there's, I, I feel like there's different markets where MLB would be successful. Nashville is one of the biggest, fastest growing metropolis areas in the United States, and they've had a a big, like a not a big league team, but they've had a Nashville Sounds for years and supported them. It's Kenley Jansen. Nashville's no longer a triple-A city the way they've grown. There's Hansel Robles. That'll be a black numbered to 65. John Carlos Stanton. Tops Fire. That, I guess 2016, they used to make these Tops Fire inserts, and they liked them so much. They're like, let's make that its own set. I think 2017 may have been the first year of Tops Fire, where it went out on its own, had its own set. Two packs left in this one. It kind of sad the Oakland A's so much history there. 1970s, 1980s too. Even like the late 90s, early 2000s, had some great teams. And now they're just gone. Nick misses fire. Yeah, it was a it's a nice it was a nice product. I, I used to like buying that. There's it seems like nowadays there's a lot less options at Walmart. I'm, I go there and I'm like, I've already opened this. I'm, I'm not gonna do do this again. Ross says you should get a hotel in Long Island in the Queens and take the train to Times Square. Yeah, I'll look at hotel prices and see. I know I've heard that a lot of hotels have been the hotels have been given to illegal immigrants. Like a lot of nice hotels are using those to house illegal immigrants. So I'm thinking that might mean hotel prices are a lot more because if there's less hotels available, less rooms available then that would make all the prices go up. Subway's awful, says White Sox Tom. Yep. Not looking forward to that. Nick says, parking in New York's like 50 bucks. Kate says, I assure you 99% of hotels are not being used for that purpose. All right. Some of the viral videos out there have shown otherwise, but hopefully, hopefully that's the case. Jake Arietta right there.
Jack says, for real, Tom, I've seen crazy stuff happen in the subways. I guess there's something going on now in New York City where just women are being punched in the in the face, just out on the street. Kate, have you heard about that? You got to be careful. It says I live in West Harlem, work in Midtown. I promise it's not nearly that bad. Just um, I would say if you're a woman walking in New York, have something to protect yourself with, whether it be mace or pepper spray or are you allowed to carry carry in the city? I don't even know, but um, just don't be looking down at your phone. Pay attention to everybody around you. There's Paul Molitor. Walk in pairs is the mix. Yeah, we don't need you getting punched in the face, Kate. There's a Corey Seager rookie card. And JoJo Fletcher is the last one. We got three boxes left. Robert says, I am from Texas and I can carry everywhere. What? Kate says, pepper spray is not allowed. You can't have pepper spray in New York City. That's... Well, if you can't have pepper spray, I assume you can't carry there either. <laughs> Why does anyone live in New York City again? No offense, Kate. Uh, that's that's crazy to me. You can't even have pepper spray there? Here we go with this next one. It's going to be... Let's go with Archive Signature Series. Upstate New York you can carry, but I guess New York City. They've got their own set of rules. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it is Mike Scott. Mike Scott was great. This might be his last ever card. I think 1991 was Mike Scott's last season. He had one fantastic campaign. I think it was 86 he won the Cy Young and had 300 stri 306 strikeouts. That was the, the year of the Mets, of course. And then uh, he used to use sandpaper, supposedly, and then... They got wise to it. They didn't let him use sandpaper anymore. And then he just kind of fell off. But Mike Scott was really, really good. You can see, yeah, 306 strikeouts in 1986. Five shutouts, a 222 ERA. Unfortunately, because his career didn't last, you know, 20 years, it's considered probably a common. But Dennis O gets this one. Mike Scott laying down a bunt there. I think that might be that might be his last tops card or one of his last tops cards. As I think 91 was his last season. Here we go. Let's do Tops Chrome Update. We only have two more boxes left here. Tops Chrome Update. This is a Breakers Delight box. Here we go. Jamie says Bob Horner was another example of what might have been. Bob Horner, yep. There's a lot of players like that that had a couple big seasons and just... Kind of faded away. Casey says, I would rather have my toenails removed than sit through Hamilton. Hey. It's it's for Sophia. Um, I'm somewhat... This is kind of like a marking it. I'm kind of somewhat familiar with Hamilton, but I don't think I've ever seen the play the whole way through. We have Garrett Hill. That is going to be a mini diamond card right there, numbered to 75. We've got Brian Rocchio, negative. A couple autographs coming up. We've got Carlos Vargas. That's going to be numbered to 250. Yuri Perez, Youthquake, and here comes the autographs. Mason Miller is going to be a rookie auto. Purple, it's going to Oakland, which will be for Rafael Soto. And Michael Stefanik is the next one in here. Michael Stefanik looks... What's going on here? Michael Stefanik looks terrified. Looks like he's about ready to get hit by a car or something. He's backing out of the way at the last second. I don't know. That's a very interesting picture that they put there. Stefanik goes to Los Angeles, which is for perceived powers. The other cards here are just refractors. Rolls Chapman, Jason DeLay, and a Brett Beatty rookie card. He saw a horse fly. He saw something, that's for sure. Here's the last box of this break, and also the last box of the night. It's 11.30, and the other breaks are not quite full so we'll give them a little more time it's going to be the national treasures box thank you for being here everybody let's see what we can find in this final one this is the highest end box of the night national treasures even though it's panini it always has some nice stuff in here if i remember correctly is there six cards in here with usually four autos national treasure box these go for about 700 dollars a piece now looking them up looks like midwest has it for 680 
um, over here still says it for six ninety before tax. So about a seven hundred dollar box here. Let's see if we can get something good. Looter says you got to stop and auto my Jabs card at the Westmoreland Card Show ne uh, next week. I'm glad you reminded me. I'll do that. I'd be happy to. I think that'll be the first card that I've signed for anybody outside of Antonio who won it in our break. National Treasure Box. All right, here we go. Just have to break through these the seal on the side here. Yeah, I don't know. What I, I feel like maybe gray is the best color to sign that card with. Like a gray Sharpie. Oh my goodness, look at this! Joe DiMaggio is on the top! I, I don't remember the last time, if ever, that I pulled a Joe DiMaggio card numbered 17 out of 49. This one will go to the New York Yankees. Kiernan Doyle, you're going to have a Joe DiMaggio Game used Hall of Fame relic right here. Look at this. So, like we said, National Treasures, it's a almost a $700 box now, and it is bringing the heat on the very first card of the box. Joe DiMaggio holding a record that will probably never be broken. 56 consecutive games with a hit. A game used jersey of Jolton Joe right there. That's a uniform. And by the way, if we make this a short so everybody can see that's not with us right now on our live stream, if you see a subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Make sure you tap it so you can come along for all of our openings. We do videos every day and we'd love to have you along. Jolton Joe here on this Tuesday night. Man, great card right there. I love booklets. Very, very nice. Congratulations, Kieran. You got a very, very good card. I have a whole bunch of shorts backed up. Timestamp, 111 minutes. Joe DiMaggio in today's day, it's 4-9. Next up, we have, let's take all the rest of these out and see what else we've got. Hopefully, we have more big hits just like that. We have another Hall of Fame relic. It is Vladdy, number to 49, number 13 to 49. Vladdy going to the Los Angeles Angels. Perceived Power Sports gets this one. And another Hall of Famers. We have three Hall of Famers. Three for three. Nash this has been a hot box of National Treasures. This is going to the Cleveland Guardians, who we, we just auctioned that one off. Dennis O took it, and Dennis is going to get this. Gaylord Perry, the Christmas number 12 of 25, triple relic right there. Gaylord Perry for the Cleveland Guardians. Very nice. Congratulations on that one. Moving right along, next up we have Evan Carter. Another good hit, number 23 of 25. This one goes to Manuel De Onda. We'll get this one. So, Manuel, congratulations. After that, we just talked about him earlier in the 1994 MVP race. We've got Matt Williams, former manager, too, of the Washington Nationals. Is Matt Williams coach or manage anywhere now? I remember he was with the Nationals for a while. But a 29 out of 35. This one goes to San Francisco, which was picked up by Travis Williams. Travis, congratulations. You have this one, Matt Williams. Coming up next... Zach Neto, it's going to be a Relic Auto, number to 99. Penmanship Materials going to the Angels. Second hit for Perceived Power Sports in this one. And we've got a big, colossal hit here. There's still, man, there's a lot of cards in these, these National. There's still three, three cards left after this. Tyler Soderstrom, number 25 out of 25 for the Oakland A's. This is going to Raphael Soto. So, Raphael, congratulations on Tyler Soderstrom. We're not done yet. We've got a top prospect here in Brooks Lee. Minnesota Twins, numbered 98 out of 99 for perceived power sports as well. Brooks Lee, a first rounder. <laughs> we got Drew Jones. That would have been a massive hit back in 2023. Drew Jones, this is a Eckler's Choice Relic Auto. That card is pretty sweet right there with the die cut Jones with the Jersey in the background, numbered 66 of 99, Arizona Diamondbacks, Cars Are Us, gets the Drew Jones. And the last card of the box, it's going to be Jeremy De La Rosa, numbered 1 of 99, autograph for the Washington Nationals. And that one's going to Steve May. And this one will be the last one of the night. So a nice National Treasures box to wrap it up, wrap it up with Jolton Joe DiMaggio in there. Really cool stuff. From National Treasures, always like finding 
hits like that of those big, big names, Joe DiMaggio, that's a relic that you never see. Because, like, who's cutting up a Joe DiMaggio jersey? And if they do cut it up, like, let's say Fanatics did buy a Joe DiMaggio game-used jersey, they'll buy that jersey, and they'll, they'll snip off maybe a couple pieces of it per year just to put in there. And that jersey will probably end up lasting them like 20 years. They're really, really tough to find big, big name auto or relics like that, Joe DiMaggio. So that's all we have for you tonight. The rest of these breaks will give them a little more time to sell. And we will come back and continue the breaks next week on Tuesday. We'll be live on Thursday with a consignment. We'll also probably do some box wars. And I'll have some, some of my cards that I'll be tossing in as well. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you're looking for the re regularly scheduled video tonight, the video of the uh, heritage is at 96%. I don't know why this is taking forever. It's almost done. Probably needs like 10 more minutes or something like that. So that preview video will be coming up super late. It'll get the, put up while everyone's sleeping, but hey, it'll, at least it keeps the upload streak alive. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you all tonight.